This is Matt from NoCodeTrainer.com. I hope you liked this video and you can take what you learned from it and incorporate it into your own bubble application. If you do, please make sure to click like and leave a comment in the comment section with how you'll use it inside of your application. If you'd like to be kept up to date with more tips and tricks you can use in your bubble app, please subscribe to our channel and be sure to check out NoCodeTrainer.com for more exclusive content. So in this video, we're going to show you how you can set up links to be able to navigate your users to Google Maps with the destination and the origin, as well as the transportation method already set so that when they decide to click on to any one of these types of elements here representing the different transportation methods and they click on to and they end up opening Google Maps, you're going to be able to see that that transportation method is already selected for them and the location from which they're coming from and going to is already selected from them. So if we take a look at this again and doing it maybe with driving directions that Google Maps would provide, you'll even be able to see the distance and everything already set up there. So let's take a look inside of the bubble editor and see how we set this up. So inside of my bubble page, I actually have the page content set to user and on my database in the user, I have a field that is address type geographic address. So to do that, type in whatever name you want it to be and then select the geographic address. So once you have a data type set up that has an address field, you'll be able to make your page the type of content for that data type that you're wanting to allow users to actually see the directions for. You know, I've done this in applications of mine for events when they're going to be trying to get directions to the venue of the event. So what I have on the page, and these portions are not really necessary uh, in order to get the functionality. This is just set up for the look that I was going for. So I have a group element. The group element is set up to be round 360. I've got the white background color on it and I have conditionals for when it's hovered to change it to a gray color. I also have on here an image element and the image element is storing a icon that I set up. And again, what I've done is when the group bike is hovered, then I'm gonna change the color of that, which is actually changing it out to a completely different image. Now you can very easily make a change in that type of setup and you could go ahead and actually just make it so that it is an icon, which would be a lot easier for changing the actual color. You could even, when we're using the link element, which is how we are getting the user to see these directions, when you have a link element, you have a choice of actually using an icon instead. And so you might end up choosing uh, from the Font Awesome Icon Library the sort of icons that you're looking to use. Uh, just remember when you're doing this, your uh, font size is going to dictate the size of that icon. So different ways in which you can actually get, you know, the sort of look to go, but to focus on the actual functionality inside of the link element, we need to have the URL set up properly and to go to an external URL. So the way that this is set up, you have this first portion here, all the way down to the origin equals. And what I'm doing is I'm setting it up to be to a current geographic position. So that current geographic position, that will require the user to allow for sharing their location to work properly. Uh, otherwise, you could very easily change that out to be uh, the user's address if they have it saved in your database. but to make it so that somebody might be on a mobile phone and, and traveling around with it, uh, try to set it up with the current geographic position. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, the current geographic position is a built-in dynamic expression by Bubble. You can just type in current once you've gotten into the actual dynamic expression setup and then just choose current geographic position. And that's all you need to do. Uh, it's very straightforward. So what once you have your origin address set up, then you're going to need to end up actually setting into place the destination. And so on that link element, and I just moved that, I want to move it back. 
on that link element, then after you put in the dynamic expression for the origin address, use the ampersand to separate the parameter and then the parameter name is destination with an equal sign. And then I'm using the dynamic expression to be from the uh, page user's address that's coming out of my database. Then you need the ampersand and travel mode. And then for bicycles, that equal sign will follow by bicycling. If you're gonna be doing this by train, you're gonna have the mode be set to transit. And if you're gonna be doing this by car, the transit mode would be driving. And if you're gonna be doing walking, the transit mode is walking. So they're all pretty much the same thing. So if I was to be doing this uh, to get started, you know, I'm just gonna show you right here. I'm gonna paste in a actual uh, link element with it. I'm going to then just set this to current page user's address. And then when I'm ready to, I'm just gonna copy and paste and I'm gonna come into the travel mode and I'll just change that travel mode to a dis different travel mode. So in this one, I'll just go ahead and say that we're driving, right? So very easy to set up one and then make the alterations to it with the travel mode so you can have all four of those travel So once you have all those set up, then you're just gonna be making sure that your database values are proper. Now, if for example, the destination value comes back as empty, the user will still be navigated over to Google Maps and the origin would still be added and the travel mode would still be added. However, the destination would not be available. I, and on the other side of it too, if the user is not allowing you to take their current geographic position and you have it set up in this way, well, again, they'll be navigated to Google Maps and the destination would be filled in properly as well as the travel mode. And then they could just manually enter their uh, location as the origin into the Google Maps uh, input. So not a lot of ways in which this could get, uh, or rather be broken in the sense that data is not available for these dynamic expressions. The user will still be navigated to Google Maps and be able to add those values in manually. So hopefully this helps you with getting a setup into your bubble app to allow users to click and find and open Google Maps very quickly. Thanks for watching the video. Hope that you found this helpful. If you'd like to be able to get editor access, please make sure that you check out the site, nocodetrainer.com. The link is in the description to the video where you'll be able to gain access into the editor and be able to check out how things were set up within the application itself.